program. How are we? We're doing well. I'm glad to see, I have to say, Piers, that um, the Prime Minister is finally taking control. Well, it's fantastic news. This uh, is the story on the front of the, of the Telegraph this morning yeah. by Christopher Hope, the chief political correspondent. Boris Johnson is to take direct control of the government's handling of the coronavirus crisis. I mean, crisis. literally, you couldn't make that up. It's June the 2nd. He's the Prime Minister. This crisis began on, uh, in January. We understand he got ill. We know that and that he's been uh, recovering. But the idea that you have to report as a story that the Prime Minister is finally taking I'm control. I'm finally taking control. Well done, mate. Mm -hmm. Um, well done. That contrast Fantastic. with the front of... You're the Prime uh, Minister. We kind of assumed you were in control. Uh, this contrast with the front of the Guardian this morning, exclusive the Labour leader, Keir Starmer, who everyone agrees has been playing a blinder since he studied it at Prime Minister's questions in tackling uh, Boris Johnson. I suppose when I say everyone agrees, uh, perhaps if you're Boris Johnson's support, you may not. But he has been very effective at getting some things answered and some things done. And he has said uh, Boris Johnson has caused a collapse in public confidence over the government's handling of the coronavirus crisis. But luckily, he's finally decided to take control. Isn't that comforting? Mm. Really comforting. Um, um, I mean, presumption, presumably, is that Dominic Cummings has been in control until now. Is that what we're supposed to assume? I think that hmm? might be part the of the The unelected story. senior advisor, who apparently has been in control of the most calamitous handling of a pandemic arguably in the entire world. The other ex And yet he's the guy that Boris Johnson risked his entire political capital to save. To save. The man who's been running the pandemic so badly. Um, and uh, the Daily Telegraph also has uh, that photograph yesterday of MPs uh, queuing to vote uh, in the House of Commons on whether they should carry on doing remote working, working total, from total home, farce. or whether they should carry on queuing to vote in that way. Well, they spent all day queuing out, out there, moaning about it, and then when they got inside, they all ignored social distancing to go and do their vote about social distancing. Yeah. I mean, these are the people we... These are the elected officials of this country. Is it any wonder that this pandemic has been run so badly when you look at how they behaved yesterday? This is Jacob Rees-Mogg's uh, behaviour. Oh, there he is. This is his great idea. Because he MPs, wants all MPs back MPs in the spending House of hours wandering around in circles and then ignoring social distancing to vote about social distancing. Mm. And they voted not to carry on doing the remote working from home, despite the fact that they said that everybody who could should work from home. Why do I get the feeling the whole thing is just a total shambles? But why can't they do anything, our elected officials, where you think, OK, we've we got, we got grown-ups in charge mm. here. With this quarantine business, Pretty Patel, the Home Secretary, who's barely seen, and when she does, she says we've done 30 trillion tests and stuff like that, uh, and says, good news, shoplifting's down when all the shops are shut. Um, she's now decided to come out today and defend this absurd quarantine move, where after no quarantine throughout the entire severity of the pandemic where we let 20 million people into the country with no checks or quarantine, many from corona-ravaged countries, Spain, Italy, Iran, from New York, from China. <laughs> now, now we're putting the shutters up mm. when there's barely anybody flying. Now we're going to really crack down on all these 20 people flying in a day. And we're going to really make it difficult for them. We're not actually going to enforce it. We don't know how. Uh, but we're going to make it really difficult. And Pretty Patel is actually going to go and do this. Very interesting piece by Andrew Pearce. I know you've got there. Yeah, so Andrew Pearce has um, done a whole page report on this in the Daily Mail this morning. Utter fiasco that began as a dead cat spin trick by desperate Dominic Cummings. Explain what that is, a dead cat. Well, a dead cat, I mean, he explains it here. It's when um, it, it's a political trick here. Cummings had deployed the classic dead cat trick of the spin doctor. It's not according. actually a dead cat. To... We think he's been murdering cats. No, it's a move, oh, referred to, a move referred to in political strategists' textbooks as putting a dead cat on the table to make sure that your enemies are looking in the wrong place. It was when there was a particular crisis over care homes. Andrew Pearce says that the quarantine suggestion was brought up. Apparently, Priti Patel, earlier on in the crisis, had wanted to bring in some kind of measures to quarantine people coming in from abroad, but had failed to get that through. And then just at the point where there's been two months of lockdown, when everybody's starting to think, at least I can go on a summer holiday, at the point where it would actually bizarrely be politically least popular with the general public, 
they have now decided to introduce quarantine. I and mean, you couldn't make this stuff up. Honestly, you couldn't make it up. If you were literally doing a spoof about this pandemic, if you were doing a comedic sketch, it would involve the Home Secretary getting tough on quarantine after six months, after letting 20 million people in. You're the Home Secretary. The time to defend the home of this country was five months ago. Mm. That's when you should have done your jobs. Uh, Andrew Pearce says, rashly, and it seems wrongly, Cummings believed that the quarantine policy would be popular with the voters. That might have been true back in March when Britain went into lockdown. It would certainly have been true in the first three months of the year when the pandemic was growing, but by early May, much of the population has barely left home, new infections and death rate declining, and most people are looking forward to life resuming. So Andrew Pearce is very well connected uh, with the hierarchy of the Conservative Party, stating that Dominic Cummings came up with this quarantine idea to distract our attention from the care home scandal. If that is true, he should resign for that alone. For that alone. He won't. He'll carry on. But the rules don't apply to Dominic Cummings. They only apply to the rest of us, the mugs, not the big people around the big table.